Hi, this is Mark. I'm coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Um, I'm here to report to you uh, on the court case. Uh, today is Wednesday. I just got back home yesterday. Uh, the court case was in Marquette, which is five hours away from here. So uh, we went up there Sunday afternoon and Monday morning at supposed to be 10 o'clock, but they moved it up to 9.15 and didn't really tell anybody. Uh, so, anyway, the judge did not rule. Uh, he gave himself 30 days to rule on the whether or not this was uh, void for vagueness, constitutional vagueness. Um, I thought that our side made a very compelling argument. I thought it was well received. Uh, the judge was seemed to be a, a pretty sharp guy. He asked quite a few questions uh, to clarify some things, and I thought he was going in the right direction. I thought that he got it. Um, he stated that he was sure that this decision, one way or the other, would be appealed, and which is true. Uh, so when a court case is appealed, it goes to a three-judge panel, and they look at it very closely to see if there's been any coercion or anything like that. And I, you know, I think we got a, a fair day in court there. Uh, our side called no witnesses. We had all the information that we needed, and it had all been submitted to the judge uh, a week before. So you had plenty of time to look through all the evidence that we had. Uh, a lot of the evidence was was gathered in deposition, and uh, I think it was done quite well. Uh, hats off, my hat is off to my attorneys, Joseph O'Leary and Glenn Smith. My hat is off to them. I think they did a superb job. Uh, all right, so he gave himself 30 days. We're told that he's a very regimented guy, and he'll probably rule in about 15 days. Okay? Now, what we're hoping for is the declaratory ruling to be thrown out because it is void for vagueness. It is vague. And as, as, as I told you before, uh, what they have done is they've added a species, species of animal, and the species is swine. They've added that to the invasive species order, which is a good law. Uh, no one would ever think that they'd add a farm animal to the invasive species order, but they did. And it is the law right now. Uh, under that law, I can be prosecuted as a felon, and I can be fined up to 20000 per offense. Uh, anything that you're going to be prosecuted as a felon has to be very specific. It cannot be vague. And something like... You know, characteristics not currently known to the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. That's pretty darn vague, if you ask me. So my pigs are legal today, but then next Tuesday they can be illegal. So that's vagueness right there. Um, some highlights. The, uh, the entire court proceeding was videotaped, and we're going to make that available to you just as quickly as we can, and it could be very, very shortly here. Uh, we were allowed in the room with video. And so we took it. And I thought it was really interesting to, to check out the apparel of the, uh, the people from the state. Last time, everybody was wearing black. Everyone. This time, nobody was wearing black. It looked like they must have gone to, uh, I don't know, Salvation Army to get their clothes because it just it, it was funny. But there were six guns in the room which I'm still disappointed in. This is the United States of America. We have a very good court system. Um, maybe the DNR doesn't know, but uh, we are not planning on a gunfight. So for them to bring six guns into the room, I thought it was disgusting. I thought it was disgusting. And I thought that they showed a lot of disrespect to the judge and the local law enforcement. I thought it was disgusting for them to bring uh, armed agents in that room. Go on. Uh, it's one thing if there's uniformed policemen in the room, state police and sheriff's department. That's one thing. Is it necessary? 
I don't think it's necessary we're farmers. We're not murder suspects or anything like that. Uh, there was one state policeman and there was uh, two sheriff's deputies, one undercover sheriff's deputies. I didn't have a problem with those guys being in the room. They, they didn't need to be there. They were detailed there. It was unnecessary, but the people from the DNR, the ones that they brought in, I had a real hard time with them because they're conservation officers that they dress up to look like undercover agents, you know. I had a problem with them being in the room, and there was five or six of them, and it looked like there was two feds. Um, we'll point them out to you in the video when it's uh, made available. And then I didn't even know what was going on outside the courtroom. Uh, we did not have to go through a metal detector this time, and there was no bomb dog. Wow. But again, if we had chosen from the get-go to take matters into our own hands, i.e. get a posse together and go on down to DNR's agency uh, headquarters quarters there and start lynching people, then I could see them looking at us as though we're dangerous people and they need to have a bunch of armed people in the room but we you know what we're in farming because we want to enjoy our family's company and live our own life in peace and I go into a court of law and the opposition has to bring in bodyguards and and armed agents I just find that disgusting this is the United States of America this is not Bolivia you know I find it disgusting and DNR, shame on you. Shame on you for the way that you're treating American citizens. And uh, this will bite you. I guarantee you this will bite you. Uh, the only person that the DNR brought uh, to show face, I guess, because they did not testify, was Shannon Hanna. And uh, her demeanor was a little different this time. And I reckon it will continue to change and soften a little bit. Um, that's about it. That's all I have to update for now. Uh, oh, one thing I left out. Last time that I talked to you, I wanted to, to tell everybody that uh, the good people from the Colbert Report came out to see us at the farm. And uh, they are a, a very different outfit than I thought they were. I'd never seen them actually, just don't get TV here at the farm, but um, I know it's on Comedy Central, and uh, but I'm told that they're a social justice outfit. And uh, as you can see, I'm wearing Stephen Colbert's colors right there. See that? The Colbert Report. But they were out to the farm, they spent eight hours out here and interviewed us, and. Uh, Ah, let's see what comes out of it. I think it could be a, a lot of fun. Okay, that's all I have for now. Um, thanks for listening, and we'll keep you informed as soon as we know what's going on. Uh, I would like everyone to remain vigilant out there, and those of you that did take a lot of videos at the courthouse, if there's anything that you see that might be of interest to us, please forward that to us, Baker Screen Acres at Yahoo. That's our, our um, just our email. And any ep updates that Jill puts out will be at bakerscreenacres.com. Uh, the court video will be available on bakerscreenacres.com whenever it is available to us. We're not going to render it at all. We're just going to put it up, uh, everything that was taken. By the way, the, the state would not allow our photographer into the room. And we don't understand that. We had a permit. The judge said it was okay, but the state said no. Hmm. They'd let video happen, but not still photos. Also, somebody from the DNR told our, our cameraman that he had to make a copy of it available to the DNR before we posted it. And we didn't agree to that at all. That's not what the permit said. Uh, but we're going to put it on YouTube, so I guess that's good enough. He can see it if he wants to. There was a couple of really interesting parts in there that I think you'll find a lot of fun. Remember, anyone can farm, and I hope you do. Good night.